Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. So in this video we are still in chapter 4.5 the metallic bond but hopefully this will be the last video for chapter 4.5 and the last video for chapter 4. Okay so in this video we are going to learn about uh, factors that affect the strength of metallic bond and relate the boiling or melting point to the molecular structure types of bonding and intermolecular forces for period 3 group 1 group 17 that's mean we are going to look at the trend of boiling point and melting point untuk period 3 group 1 dan group 17 lepas tu kita nak explain dia Okay, factors that affect the strength of metallic bond. Okay, so there are two factors that affect the strength of metallic bond and that are number of valence electron per atom and atomic radius. So, as you can see, saya dah buat macam bentuk ni. So, ini directly proportional. That's mean strength of metallic bond akan meningkat, okay, will increase when the number of valence electron increase. Okay. Tapi, uh, strength of metallic bond akan meningkat sekiranya atomic radius dia berkurang. Okay. So, kiranya kalau saiz makin kecil, uh, metallic bond makin kuat. Okay. So, kena ingatlah ini uh, atomic radius is inversely proportional to strength of metallic bond. Uh, number of valence electron is directly proportional to strength of metallic bond. So, the bonding will be weaker in sodium. 1 valence electron compared to magnesium 2 valence electron and aluminium 3 valence electron ok so uh, kiranya dia kata antara sodium, magnesium dan aluminium, uh, sodium dia punya bo metallic bond adalah the weakest lah sebab ok number of valence electron for sodium hanyalah satu valence electron sahaja sikit so strength of metallic bond pun lemah ok alright tapi kalau macam aluminium dia ada 3 valence electron number of valence electron dia tinggi so maksudnya strength of metallic bonding dia tinggi Effect of the strength of intermolecular forces on melting point and boiling point of group 1. Okay, so kita nak tengok group 1. Okay, so dalam group 1 ada lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium. And as we can see over here, the melting point and the boiling point, okay, decreases going down the group. Okay, daripada 100 lebih jadi 20 lebih, daripada 1000 lebih jadi 700 lebih. Boiling point makin rendah menunjukkan intermolecular forces dia makin lemah sebab kita dah tak perlu energi yang banyak untuk break the bond ok so uh, kita dah dapat conclude sikit lah dekat sini tapi persoalannya what is the intermolecular forces that exist in group 1 ok so dalam group 1 lithium sodium semua ni adalah metal ok so bonding antara metal dengan another metal macam lithium dengan lithium adalah metallic bond lah ok so that's mean bonding that exists in group 1 adalah metallic bonding. Okay, so kita analyze balik from our knowledge about metallic bonding. Adakah logik? Okay, so metallic bonding dia kata uh, makin lemah going down the group. Okay, so kenapa makin lemah going down the group? Sebab logik lah, as we can see the size, okay. So, the size here is getting bigger lah. Okay, sebab kita belajar going down the group, the atomic radius getting bigger. Okay, so kalau atomic radius getting bigger, we need to go back to this one. Okay, so if your atomic radius is getting bigger, that's mean the strength of metallic bonding is getting weaker. Okay, so logic lah. That's why going down the group, dia punya melting point decreases, dia punya boiling point decreases. Sebab strength of metallic bonding makin lemah. Senang untuk break the bond. Okay, so that is the explanation for melting point and boiling point for group 1. So now let us fill in the blank. Down group 1, atomic radius increases. The strength of metallic bonding decreases sebab uh, dia punya strength of metallic bonding is inversely proportional to atomic radius. And then less energy is needed to overcome the attractive forces ok sebab bila makin weak bonding tu makin senang untuk kita break the bond ok so kita tak perlukan energy yang banyak so the boiling point decreases ok next kita tengok the effect of the strength of intermolecular forces on melting point and boiling point of group 17 ok so group 17 consists of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and then as we can see going down the group, the melting point and the boiling point increases, makin meningkat. Oh, which is opposite to group 1 lah. 
Okay, so kalau melting point and boiling point increases, that's mean the intermolecular forces is getting stronger lah going down the group. That's why we need more energy to break the bond. Okay, so the question now, apakah type of bonding that exists antara uh, molecule dalam group 70 ni? Okay, so dia kata melting point and boiling point increases going down the group because dia kata all the halogen exist as diatom, as 2. That's mean kalau macam fluorine ni dia wujud sebagai F2, Cl, Cl2, Br, Br2, iodine, I2. Okay, so bonding antara F2 dengan F2 tu bonding apa? So imagine macam ni, you have F2 molecule and another F2 molecule, the bonding between F2 and F2 adalah van der Waals forces sebab dia bukan hydrogen bond lah obviously and bukan juga metallic bonding sebab this is not metal this is non metal okay and then hydrogen bonding dia mesyarat dia mesti ada handphone dan phone okay so sini tak ada H tu tak ada tak wujud so tak boleh form hydrogen bond that means the bonding that exists between F2 molecule and another F2 molecule adalah van der Waals okay the same bonding antara Cl2 molecule and another Cl2 molecule iaitu van der Waals And kita belajar the strength of van der Waals forces depend on the molecular size. Okay, that's mean the greater the molecular size, okay, the stronger the van der Waals forces. Okay, so going down the group, kita tahu molecular size ataupun molecular weight makin meningkat lah. Okay, so bila makin meningkat, logik lah van der Waals forces dia makin kuat. Bila van der Waals forces makin kuat, that's mean melting point and boiling point makin tinggi. Okay, so as we go down the group, atomic size increases, van der Waals forces between molecule increases. So, kalau dia punya intermolecular forces getting stronger, that means more energy is needed to overcome these forces. That's why group 17, melting point and boiling point increases going down the group. Effect of the strength of intermolecular forces on melting point and boiling point of period 3. Okay, so... This is all the element that exist in period 3 and as you can see dia punya boiling point dia makin meningkat lah. Okay so meningkat dekat sini tapi silikon paling tinggi dia punya boiling point but for phosphorus dia punya boiling point makin rendah. Okay and as you can see dia punya nilai pun sangatlah berbeza. Okay, so kalau soalan minta explain the effect of the strength of intermolecular forces on melting point and boiling point for period 3, you have to divide your explanation into 3. Okay, kamu kena explain 3 benda yang berbeza. First, kamu kena explain about an AMGAL sekali sebab dia ada persamaan iaitu metal. So, dia punya bonding dia adalah metallic bond. Okay, tapi silikon dia uh, special sikit. You have to explain dia punya giant molecular structure, uh, covalent bonding dia. Okay, but then for phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon, semua ni adalah non-metal. So, dia punya explanation uh, kena guna van der Waals forces. Okay, so that's why you need to give three different explanations. So, saya dah bahagikan dah. Ha? Ini dia punya pecahan dia. Alright, so let us look at metal dulu and AMGAL. Okay, so metal exists like this lah. Okay, so the intermolecular forces that exist between metal and metal adalah metallic bond. Okay, so kenapa boiling point dia makin meningkat daripada Na pergi Mg pergi Al. Okay, so ini kita boleh relate balik apa yang kita dah belajar. Uh, Na ada one valence electron. Okay, magnesium ada two valence electron. Eh, aluminium ada three valence electron. Okay, so kan kita dah belajar the strength of metallic bonding is directly proportional to the number of valence electron. The higher the valence electron the stronger the metallic bonding. Okay, that's why uh, the boiling point for aluminium is the highest lah. Okay, antara tiga ni sebab dia punya valence electron paling tinggi. Okay, so the stronger the metallic bond, the higher the boiling point. Okay, the order of increasing valence electron is as follow. Okay, and then the order of increasing boiling point pun sama macam order of increasing valence electron sebab dia directly proportional. Okay, so settle for an AMGAL. Next, let us look at silicon. Okay, so silicon dia adalah metalloid. That means semi-metal and exists as molecular structure. Okay, so silicon dia punya structure dia bonding macam ni. Eh. Okay, so you can imagine actually ini adalah silicon, ni silicon, silicon, silicon. Okay, so silicon and so on lah. Setiap titik hitam tu adalah silicon. 
Okay, so the bonding antara silikon dengan silikon ni adalah covalent bond. So, dia kata sini silikon has the highest boiling point among all elements dalam period 3. Sebab betul lah, okay, kita tengok nilai dia pun memang paling tinggi. Okay, so apa specialnya? Sebab dia kata each silicon is tetrahedrally bonded to other four silicon atom with strong covalent bond. Okay, so kiranya dia kata satu silicon dibonded dengan another four silicon atom. Betul? Okay, so we can see from here, let's say this silicon atom ada bonded to satu, dua, tiga, empat silicon atom yang lain. So, this silicon pun sama, bonded dengan benda lain juga. Okay, so this result in a crystal that is essentially one gigantic molecule or giant covalent structure. So, as a result, okay, structure ni saya lukis sikit je. Okay, so imagine dia terus bersambung ni. Ini tetrahedrally bonded lagi. Ini tetrahedrally bonded lagi. So, the structure akan jadi sangat besar. Okay, so bila structure tu sangat besar dan dia jadi sangat kuat, so more energy is needed to break the covalent bond between silicon in giant covalent structure. Okay, so kalau soalan tanya, kenapa silicon has the highest boiling point ataupun melting point dalam period 3 sebab dia ada giant molecular structure. Okay, giant molecular structure tu silicon tu tetrahedrally bonded to another silicon. Okay, tetrahedral tu maksudnya shape tetrahedral kita tu lah. Okay, kamu boleh nampak dekat sini. Okay, and lastly, saya nak explain about this one pula. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. Okay, so semua ni adalah non-metal. Okay, so uh, this non-metal exists as simple covalent molecular structure. That's mean phosphorus wujud sebagai P4. Okay, chlorine kita dah tahu dia, dia group 17, dia exists as diatomic, so Cl2. Sulfur wujud sebagai S8, argon wujud sebagai AR. Okay, and then uh, the bonding antara Cl2 dengan Cl2, let's say lah kalau saya draw another Cl2 here, the bonding here adalah van der Waal forces. Okay, sama juga antara S8 molecule and S8 molecule, the bonding adalah van der Waal forces. Okay, so kita belajar van der Waal forces depend on the size or molecular weight of the molecule. Okay, so the bigger the molecular weight ataupun the bigger the size, the stronger the van der Waal forces. Sama macam before this lah. Okay, so ini tips yang kamu kena ingat lah. Okay, so the stronger the van der Waal forces, that's mean the higher the boiling point. Sebab makin kuat ikatan dia, maksudnya makin susah kita nak break the intermolecular forces. So, makin banyak energy diperlukan, so temperature dia akan meningkat. Okay, so the order of increasing size macam ni. So, kiranya yang paling kecil adalah argon, Cl2 besar sikit, P4 besar lagi, S8 lagi besar. Sebab apa? Sebab ialah S8 banyak ni kan. Okay, and then the order of increasing boiling point pun sama juga. Sebab lagi besar size ataupun lagi tinggi molecular weight, makin tinggi dia punya boiling point. Okay, so I think that's all for chapter 4.5 and that's all for chapter 4. Okay, so thank you. Bye-bye.